Greetings LEGO parents. My name is Sasha, the Montreal LEGO Maniac, and I welcome you back for another build. For this week's release, I'm looking to add to my slowly expanding LEGO city with the Bookshop. This is kit number 10207 and has 2,504 pieces, and this should be a fun little build, as it looks like it's not just a bookshop, but there's a small little building next to it, perhaps where the uh, owners of the bookshop live, and uh, three stories of uh, little adventures to explore. So, without further ado, let's get this thing unboxed, see what we have in here, so we can get this build underway. So here we have the bookshop, but that's not the whole story, because you have two buildings here. The bookshop itself, residing in only one of these buildings, only takes up one third of the floors. So there's two other floors to explore, and the second building, being a completely independent structure you can detach from the first, is a private residence. Starting here, this two-story with half-basement home is both cute and charming with its two-tone blue paint job with white trim. Around the back, we have a small little garden some little steps that lead up to the back door, a small little balcony, and a little skylight just next to that. Coming around to the front, starting on the top floor, we've got these two cute little windows protruding out of a sloped roof that's covered with these intricate little blue tiles that give it a nice level of detail. Continuing down, these pleasing details continue in the form of the external window sills, the little peak over the front door, the blue dome over the gorgeous bay windows, the ornate railings next to the front steps, and this cute little garden just beneath the bay windows. Making our way to the interior, the first thing we find when we open the door is a cute little yellow floor mat. On the wall next to that, we have a little hat rack with a hat and umbrella hanging. Just to the right of that, we have the door to the basement, which we'll come back to in a little bit. And again to the right, we have this little potted plant in a little nook right next to the stairs. Swinging around to the other side, we find, starting from left to right, a little pantry full of supplies, a nice majestic fireplace with a little fire going, a cute little tea set 
on the table with the newspaper just in front of that. And over on the wall, we have a little piece of art. And right next to that, we have this little bench. Very cozy place to sit, right in front of these beautiful bay windows. Best place to be reading a book, which you would have picked up at the bookstore next door. Hiking up the stairs to the second floor, we find the bedroom, where of course, we have a bed. Looking really solid with this carved wooden frame. And just next to that, we've got a dresser with a little lamp, a little plant, and some more art on the wall. And now, heading down to the basement, we can see this is a very low ceiling environment. Not even enough space for a minifigure to stand up straight. And we also have a dirt floor, or grass floor, or, you know, whatever it is. Off in the back corner, we have a little table with a bag sitting on it. No idea what this is about. Just to the left of that, hanging on the wall, we have some scissors. And on the ground, we have this object. I have no idea what it is. Then in the bottom left corner, we have a ladder here. I'll fold it up and put it on its side. This ladder is actually pretty easy access because just behind it, there's a little door. So from the exterior, you can open up this door, access the ladder, pull it out, do your tasks without having to set foot in this low ceiling basement. Moving on over to the bookstore, this majestic three-story structure looks great with its red roof, tanned exterior, concrete highlights, and this cute little birch tree sporting some fall foliage. Starting on the top, the smooth curves of the concrete highlights give a nice elegant look to this building. With the top floor having a large six pane window, the second floor having a pair of four pane windows with arches on top, and the main floor, Birch Books, aptly named for the tree, having its classic retail store of window fronts, a nice pattern in the ground right in front of the front door, and just over on the left of that, we have a little bookcase here, which I'm choosing to believe is one of these cute little communal libraries. Making our way on the front door, the first thing we find over on the right, classic for a bookstore, a bookshelf. Over on the other side of the shop, in the back corner, surprise, surprise, we got some more books. And just next to that, we have the cash. Making our way up the spiral staircase, we come to this little platform where we again find some more books, which then leads us to some more stairs, which takes us to the second floor. Up here in the back left corner, we've got another set of spiral stairs heading up to the third floor. And just beneath that, we have the stairs we just came up. Along the back wall, we have a door that leads to the balcony. But before we get to any of that, let's flip them around and have a look at this beautiful grandfather clock, a nice comfy armchair, cozy little reading light, a little table with mug off on the left, a tiny little mat on the floor in front of you. So you're all set for a cozy little reading experience. Out to the back balcony, we've got a cute little setup here, a little table, two chairs, nice for a little romance. And coming up to the third floor, we find the bedroom, looking classically majestic, just like the building. Here we have this bed with its two posts and angled centerpiece, very much matching the building just above it. Just to the left of that, we have this little aquarium with this cute little blue chameleon in it, which I'm assuming has turned blue so it can blend in with the bed. Finally, there's a few small accessories that come with the kit. First, of course, with the bookstore, we have a book, Moby Brick. Opening it up, we have the classic one by one flat plate, once upon a time. And then we have a small toy plane because amongst our many figures, which we have five, there is a small child. The five characters you get with the set are pretty basic standard people, but that's what you expect when you get these kits because you're just building classic setups. But I do gotta say, this woman in the purple shirt, I really love her hair. I haven't seen this before. It's huge, it's voluminous, and just gets my attention. And that pretty much covers the bookshop, a pair of buildings that just look great as part of this different Lego experience where you get to create a whole city an environment that you can set up, having all these different little stories playing out for everyone to enjoy. An experience that you just don't find in the other types of Lego sets. I personally really like that the house has a color scheme that matches the downtown diner, so I'm going to put those side by side because they should just look great together. Which of course is a large part of the appeal of this, growing the city. So on that note, I invite you to look up the Muncher Lego Maniac on Instagram and check out the photos that will soon be up of the very beginnings of this slowly expanding Lego city.